reaching out to my friend with some poems. His spirit sounded in trouble today. And uh, I hope I can reach him with these. Why? Oh, boy, the airplanes are timely. I can't, they're kind of timely in his videos, too. He gets a lot of that. <laughs> I guess it's part and parcel of the thing uh, we both seem to wish to express. So, as that drone wanes in the distance, I'll attempt to read these poems from my friend. Why? Turning off the morning's hogwash of news frees my mind to ask myself why. Why have I been so long away from paper and pen, writing reflections of thoughts, ideas, brilliance of joy, and dull ache of all too often melancholy? Why? I suppose, like many of my contemporaries, young and old alike, I can make myriad excuses and toss them like a cheaper confetti to those along the route of my misparade of mistakes I have made in my elusive dashes hither and yon. Perhaps I have reached the clarity wrought by pain of indescribable magnitude, anguish, facts to cry for. Why, therefore, do I write now when I look to complete a book destined to be a gift for the brightest star in my universe? And why have I included some, perhaps too many, heavier poems when brevity is desired? Is it the perceived loss of love signals from those I sired? Could it be the perception of a loss of dynamism that drove the vehicle of my spirit like a raging, fiery Ferrari through chicanes and straight stretches of a checkered life? Why do I care when it seems so many I love do not? Why do I feel so lost and lonely on the island of my dreams? That was from my friend Campbell. Here's another one that kind of falls into that same category, I suppose. Seems I'm stricken at a critical time with a one-two punch of writers and art block. The Crocs Maw looms to feast upon a crippled creative mind in misery. How to do battle with such fierce foes, a pressing ponder as the mill wheel grinds. One finds strength in memories, images of the givers of true inspiration. And I would simply say, to that hand bone contemplate frog hollow days at beautiful pool. No more to be said. Da -da 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 -da. Voices. Dare I write, at least attempt to do so, amid the cacophony of rain howl in quest of dialogue for creative scenarios? Strange names and stranger acts own a night of warm February day as I wait for my wine to breathe ere I drink. Slumber will seek me soon as I make my bed in hopes of dreamscape where wonders wail their echoes in the sleep-stressed psyche. I have paid no heed to the government's signals to come to offices in ruin sought for a day. I shall leave off to do voices with my son, voices of bionicle mocks Moses made, voices of T-Rex, velociraptors, and a snake from petty troubles my mind to take. Yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> well, alright. Let's see what else we got that falls into that. Robert Frost over oatmeal. Wolfen worked me to let him out into the fog filled morning mist, his perceptive nose to all the spots where a wandering female dog had pissed. Silent through dark branches flew the regal hawk to a perch to peer, while Wolfen sniffed and scratched and waited for his favorite call to hear. Big dog! sent him flying to the front of the enclave to check his message bush. Back to the courtyard where a wren exchanged calls with me ere the door I push. Now again inside my honey cinnamon drink, I prepare to drink and read Robert Frost over oatmeal. Thanks for being my dad. Thought I had one more, and I thought I even had it, uh, Mark. But I don't. So there it is. Poor old Hambone. Au revoir.